we got the chance to fly Singapore Airlines again in business class. And this time, it is in the regional cabin on an Airbus A350. Today's flight takes us from Bangkok's Wanapum Airport to Singapore, a two-hour hop across the Gulf of Thailand. Come on board with us as we explore this flight in detail and show you how we booked this using points. Hello and Happy New Year from Bangkok. Our mini Asia holiday is over and now we are heading back to Melbourne. Having flown on their long haul A350, we were interested to see how this product compares. Today's journey begins with a 30 minute taxi ride to Swarnapumi Airport. There are actually two airports in Bangkok. One is called Swarnapumi and the other one is called Myak. So make sure you check which airport you're flying out of before making the trip back to the wrong one. As we approach the airport, we are greeted by a sea of purple Thai Airways tails. Five is the entrance to Singapore Airlines. The airport itself occupies an area of 32 square kilometers and it's actually the 10th largest in the world. The check-in area here is absolutely huge with almost 350 counters. SQ711? Yep, that's up. Four flights today. There are four daily flights operated by Singapore Airlines on this route all on A350s. The dedicated business class counters here make check-in a breeze. Oh, he's wearing a mask too. One of the coolest features of this airport is the presence of an observation deck before security. Well, it's one of the few airports that still has an observation deck, so let's check it out. The view from here is not unobstructed and is through some glass panels, but still satisfies the geek. You can see there's quite a bit of space here if you want to come here and watch some planes before your flight. What do you think? Lots of purple tents. So there are a couple of 747s parked at the back there, although I don't think they're going to be flying again, at least commercially. Look at this guy. Hi, watch out. As we go past security and immigration, we are spoiled for choice with a wide array of lounges to choose from. Okay, so because we are flying on Singapore Airlines business class today, we get to try out all the Singapore Airlines and Star Alliance lounges here in Bangkok. And there's actually four of them. We will be making a separate video on our lounge hopping here, but we recommend the EVA Air lounge as the highlight. This is mainly due to the quality and variety of local food options. It also feels like the most modern with its shiny mirrors and lights. In addition, the lounge offers shower facilities which is very useful. On the downside, it does get a bit busy, so you could consider the Chris Flyer Lounge or one of the many Thai lounges as alternatives. Anyway, our aircraft from Singapore is here, and it's now time to head to the gate. I need to try out this new business class. Ah, oh, yes. And this will be our aircraft for today. A baby in the Singapore Airlines A350 fleet, having just been delivered in January 2022. Boarding begins shortly, with the PPS club first, followed by us. Let's take a look at the seating arrangement in this aircraft. There are 303 seats in total, with 40 of those being in business class. The seats in business class are arranged in a 1-2-1 layout across the two front sections and we are in the smaller back section in seats 19A and 20A.
It is worth noting that 19A is a bulkhead seat and it features extra legroom. Being New Year's Day, the cabin still has some Christmas decorations. We are presented with some champagne as a welcome drink and pushback come in straight after this. In safety briefing and on a journey through Singapore. We taxied past the number of familiar aircrafts as we headed towards runway 01R for our on-time departure. The sunset takeoff from Bangkok was beautiful in the backdrop of the city lighting up to the night sky. So here is a tour of this regional business class seat. The seats come with a plush pillow and a small amenity kit. There is a retractable armrest and the seat can be adjusted using the control panel next to it. This interface also contains some additional controls for lights and call button. And here is a tour of the rest of the seat. Most wide bodies these days, this aircraft also doesn't feature individual air vents, but there are the standard reading lights. This aircraft is only two years old, or well, actually just one, and you can really tell that there's no mark or anything on this plane at all. This is the same seat used on the SU-787, and with the A350 being wider, there is some extra room between the seats and the wall. For this short flight, we didn't really feel the need to sleep, but here is how this seat converts to a bed. For in-flight entertainment, there is a wide choice of movies and TV shows offered by Chris World System, which is a touchscreen. And there is a flight map to check the progress, but there are no cameras offered. There is another small touchscreen next to the seat which can be used to control the TV. Here's a look at the menu for this flight. SQ didn't offer his famous book the cook service on this flight. So we had to go for the in-flight options. I, I might actually skip the main course and just have the appetizer and the dessert. Yeah, okay, sure. I'm saving myself for the lobster on the next flight. <laughs> yes. Having had a feast in the lounge, I decided to skip the mains and just have the entree and the dessert. Being a short flight, all the items are served together in a single tray with stainless steel cutlery. And for reference, this is what the pan fried chicken looked like. There are three toilets available in this cabin and they were fairly standard. They feature the same Penhaligon's product as the amenity kit, which takes us back to the amenity kit. Goodie bag. What's inside the goodie bag? Lastly, Singapore Airlines is offering in-flight Wi-Fi in the cabins for free, subject to various limits. In business class, it is offered across the full flight, which is almost industry leading. As we come in to land in Singapore already, and we see the lineup of ships across the world's second busiest port. We can summarize this flight as an incredible way to get across the Gulf of Thailand. 
Singapore Airlines continues to rank highly year after year and it is great to see them evolve and offer things like free Wi-Fi across the flight. We look forward to trying them again in future in various cabins. Just like that, we are back again at Singapore Changi Airport. Very nice short flight. It was really nice short flight. The crew was fantastic. We booked this flight using Virgin Australia's Velocity Points, which is a partner of Singapore Airlines. The two flights for us to get to Melbourne added to a total of 4,600 miles, which fits into the 65,000 points category. Notice how it cost us the same if we just booked from Singapore to Melbourne? This means we basically got this flight for free by maximizing the award chart. Hope you found this video interesting and useful. Thank you so much for watching. And join us next time to see how the other flight went.